Hello there, my name is Faizan Sayed, and I'm the Executive Director for the Council on American-Islamic Relations, based here in St. Louis. This year, they have reintroduced another anti-Sharia piece of legislation. For those of you who don't know what anti-Sharia legislation is, they are the brainchild of a man named David Yarshni, and he is a man behind the anti-Sharia movement that we've seen in the last year and this year. And this is a man who has come out and said that Islam is a religion, is an evil religion, and that blacks are the most murderous people in the world. Stop and hear, peace of Christ to all. You see those, uh, uh, you know, liars, because they are trying to make you fight against this guy. They insert lies about this person. He is saying that the black are the most murderer people. And but, but, but just wait. First of all, what does it have to do with Islam anyway? Is number one. Oh, uh, you have to put it there because you want to get people to support you and to make it as if you are a person who is defending the black ones. When the fact Islam is the one who insults the black one. And we have tons of proofs from your books, including the Quran. So this is how evil those people are. They try to implement, like to plan something there inside their statement to make you hate this guy who is going against Islam. Now, I do not know really this guy, but I never, uh, I searched for his name. I never see anything about him saying any such a statement. And you know what? I challenge you to show me such a thing because I want to see if this guy is saying that. If, if he's saying that, that uh, black people are bad or something, I will be the first one to be against him. But still, I will be against you, Muslims. Because Islam is an enemy for everybody. Not me saying you are my enemy. Islam saying that. So when you deny that this is a fact, you are being a liar. And you know what? Let us show you from your Quran. Why I want to make a statement without proof, as you say. You know, you Muslims, you make a statement without a proof. For us, we make a statement with a proof. You accuse of a man, accuse him that he is making a statement against the black one. I think you are making a big fat lie. At the same time, did this guy lie when he said that Islam is an enemy? Did he lie? Absolutely he did not. Because you consider everyone is a Muslim is an enemy. Actually, you consider everyone he is a Muslim, not from your sect as an enemy. And let us show you that from your Quran. Let us read together. Chapter 3, verse number three, uh, three, uh, uh, 28. Uh, and this is your, you can use any translation you want. <clears throat> you pick up any translation you want. Let not the believers take the disbelievers for their friends in preference to the believers. When, when you cannot allow, you are not allowed to take me as a friend. What, what does that mean? It means I am an enemy. And actually, uh, uh, if you mean it really, if a Muslim he mean it really that he take me as a friend, the Quran says the one who do that he has no connection with Allah, unless to be, yet to guard yourself against them, which means you are lying to them. Talk, talking to them as if it is, as if it were real, true. But in the fact, it is a security. So here we go again. Those Muslims, they are practicing the taqiyya, Islamic care organization, and they are trying to fool people saying, oh, guys, you know, those who go against Islam, they are really racist people, and they are people, they are teaching hate, and they are telling you that Islam is against you, and Islam is an enemy. It's not him who is saying that. It's your Quran saying that you are an enemy to everybody. It's your Quran who is saying that you are a person who cannot take anyone as a friend unless he is a follower of Allah. So why Muslims lie? But actually, it's very obvious because the verse in the front of us, chapter verse, chapter 3, verse number 28, it says it clearly too that Muslims, they can lie to us. And actually, I mentioned that in many videos before. You know, if we go, uh, if we go to the Quran uh, and we go to chapter 3, verse number 28, you know, let us go here. <clears throat> chapter 3, Verse number 28, you will see the reason Muslims, they are allowed to lie. Actually, Muslims, they, can, they, are, they are free to take a false oath lying to you. It's part of Islam. It's legal. So here, you know, you will see, this is, the, this is the Islamic book, not my book. In their book, it says, let not the believers take the disbelievers as, as uh, uh, partners rather than that in, uh, in, 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 instead of the believers. For whoever does that, okay, so let us see, if those people of care, they took, off, took us as really friends, what the Quran says about them, if they really mean it, that they are friends to us. 
so for whoever does that if they really take us as a friend that is over uh, wh whoever takes them as friends which mean does not belong to the religion of god so the one who take you as a real friend from the from the muhammadan if one muhammadan he decide to take me as a friend he don't belong to the religion of islam which means he is not a muslim he is out of islam he's an apostate unless unless what to protect yourself against them and by the way in here protect yourself according to muslims they agree that protecting yourself means protecting islam too because you and islam is one as safeguard so what you do now in which case you may show you may show to them like friendship you know to them through words this is what they say to you oh we are friends and we are citizen and we are good citizen of america and you know care we love everybody and you know we are defending the rights of muslims we are citizen they want to use your constitution when they don't believe in your constitution when they believe that the constitution of usa is a constitution of satan at the same time they're trying to use your constitution to silence you but not in your heart so look at the quran saying the muslims you can you can say to the non-muslims you are friends we are good neighbors i love america i love australia i love canada okay you know in your words but not in your heart so he's allowed islam is allowed in muslims to lie loudly as long the point is to deceive the non-muslims <clears throat> Uh, now, just to show you that this is not one scholar uh, uh, statement, all the Muslim scholars, regardless who they are, all of them, they agree that Muslims, they are allowed to practice taqiyya. This is called taqiyya, which means protection. Uh, and the, the, the funny Muslim, they say to, to, to me uh, in one post about my book, uh, The Deception of Allah, that uh, the word taqiyya in Islam, and they show me a, a dictionary made by an American or Australian, I don't know, that taqiyya means asylum or refuge. Or protection was I agree that's what taqiyya mean the term of taqiyya is to do protecting yourself and this is what Muslims do they protect Islam by lying and you know I'm not the one saying that read here we go this is chapter 3 verse 28 and this is Ibn Abbas one of the biggest scars of Islam and by the way this is the official government website of the kingdom of Jordan Amman owned by the king himself what it says <clears throat> let not the believers take the believer out not Take hypocrites, we are the hypocrite, etc. Read the whole story just to make it short. Uh, uh, those who they are believers, they are, they cannot take us as a friend or take the Jews as a friend uh, or to make them honorable. Like what Muslims, they cannot give you honor. And for sure, this is an Islamic land. Now, what is the case if you are living in America or Australia or Canada where Muslims are not having the upper hand? Then they can play games with you. The Quran says, as if you if you take them for real as an, as a, as a friends you have no connection with Allah you have no honor and no mercy and no protection which means a threat they are, Allah is threatening you the Muslims will kill you if you do really take us as a friend if you mean it from Allah unless 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 what look look at the condition unless it be that you but guard yourself against them save yourself from them so a Muslim cannot take us as a friend unless he have to to guard himself save himself so care they want to save themselves from being exposed that they are created by terrorist group which is hamas you know the founder of, of care already is is a, a, a kicked out of usa for he is a member of hamas it's not a secret taken as if it were security so friendship with muslims for muslims it is friendship with us is as security saving yourself from them by speaking a friendly way towards them while your heart is like this so this guy in, Ham in Hamas or this guy in Care, he said to us, brothers, sisters, those who hate the black one, those suddenly the, the Muslims, they are so in love with the black one. Go and see what they do to the black ones in the Middle East. Go and ask them how many black slaves their prophet he have. Go and ask them what the Quran says about slave. Actually, I'm going to show you that before we finish this video. So those people, they already consider us, not us considering them, notice. They consider everyone is that a Muslim is an enemy and they are forbidden from taking us as a friends. And we can show you many verses, by the way, in the Quran and from their own translation. Just another example before we go to the second topic, chapter 5, verse 51. 
Oh, you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protectors. Now, by the way, there's a funny, uh, a Muslim is supposed to, they want to debate me, they want to refute me. They said, no, 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 this verse is speaking about protectors. Oh, oh just wait. You, did you say protectors? He said, yes. Uh, then it's mean you cannot take our police as your police. You cannot take our USA army as your army. You cannot take our USA government as your government. That is enough alone to take citizenship from you. Because you liar, you took an oath when you took citizenship saying that you are willing to bear arm to protect USA. So you did lie to us saying, oh, I want to become a US citizen and you take an oath. Why? Because the Quran clearly says that Muslims, they can, Muslims, they can take false oath lying to non-Muslims. And we can show you that from the Quran too. Actually, let us show it to you. Why we want to wait? You know, we have all the proofs and uh, we don't make speeches. Chapter 2, verse uh, 225. And by the way, there's many of them. I just the showing one is enough. Here we go. This is the Quran saying, Allah will not call you to account of thoughtless in your authors, but for the intention of your heart. Uh oh. So the Muslims, he take an oath. Says, I swear by Allah, I'm going to defend America when he takes a citizenship. But Allah don't care for that oath because this is not your intention. His intention is to destroy America. Therefore, he is allowed to lie because what is in his heart is not what is in his mouth. And we just showed you the other verse saying that you can say things friendly in the mouth, but your heart is dislike that. So as long as you are practicing this, and practicing that you are good to Allah. Lying to the non-Muslims, lying to the American, to the Canadian, to the Australian, you are a very good person. So when, when somebody from care, he want to give us an impression that we are the good citizen, we are people who are obedient to the law, you know, we are the one who follow and we love America and we trying just to be a good citizen. I say, I say, you are a liar. I'm not the one who's saying that. Quran. And the Quran is teaching you, you can take a false oath. So if a Muslim take an oath for you, love, he don't mean it. Those people, they are willing to swear by Allah, by the Quran. Actually, they are willing to claim that they are not even Muslims, no more. For the sake of Islam, they are willing to do anything. So let us continue with this guy. He's cute, by the way. <laughs> Look, they wanna they wanna tell you that they are very awesome people, and we are evil. We are against Sharia law. Okay, tell us why we should not be against Sharia law. And he's also come out and said that Islam was born in violence and it will die in that way, and that the Muslim people those. Oh, oh Islam! He said that Islam is it, born in violence and will die in this way. So he is bad. What if I show you that your prophet is the one who said that? Unbelievable, man! Unbelievable. Let us see. I want this Abdul to read with me. Maybe maybe his English is better than mine, actually. He's a Pakistani guy, I guess. Huh? Uh, Abdul, is that your prophet saying here? Read with me, please. Allah Apostle, which means Muhammad, I have been sent with the shortest expansion, etc. Bearing or oldest meaning. And I have been victorious with terror. He was victorious by what? By terror. Cast in the heart of the enemy. So you are saying the guy is wrong? He said that about your prophet? Your prophet said that about himself, you liar. So when your prophet, how your prophet took over countries and he forced them to Islam? By terror. By what? By terror. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 52, hadith number 220. And, you know, actually, if we go, we can find you tons of hadith, not only one or two or three. Allah made me victorious by terror. Allah made me victorious by terror. Allah made me victorious by terror. So all of those your prophet saying then are not enough to prove who is your prophet. And you are saying the guy he did lie? Now, who is the liar? I think it's very obvious. Let us continue with more lies. Committed to Islam, 
as we know it today, are our enemies. So this is the type of right-wing person that has come out and said these types of really radical and racist things against Those are racist? I, I don't see racist there. I don't know, like, except the law you said that he said the black people as violence. I don't see uh, any racist. Uh, but as long as we mentioned, by the way, the black one, uh, let us see who is the racist about uh, against the black. This is chapter 2, verse 178. We can click at any translation of your choice to show you, and none of those are our translation, by the way. Those are Muslim translation, and this is a Muslim website. We go to translation of Victor, chapter 2, verse 178. O you who believe in retaliation in the prescribed for you in the matter of murder. So what the, uh, what the issue here? Somebody he did murder someone. So what is the the respond to that what is the law uh, to follow to practice the free man for the free man just wait just wait free man to the free man i thought you muslims are against racism the free man to the free man what does that mean oh, oh, oh i will tell you what it's mean it's mean if you are a white person and you kill a white person you will die but if you are a white person and you kill a slave, slave for the slave. Which means if I am a white person and I kill your slave, what is my punishment? You kill one of my, my slaves. Which means Islam considers the slave as the same as a goat. You kill my goat, I kill your goat. Female for the female. You see how much beautiful justice Islam have? So Muslims don't have racism. What are you talking about? So Imagine we practice this verse. He is. They are saying we want to have Sharia law in USA. This is Sharia law. This is Sharia law. This is free for the free, slave for the slave. <laughs> they are saying if you go against Sharia law, they are you are racist. What the fact? Islam is the racist religion. As long actually Muslims, they are speaking about racism. What about we ask Muslims about the chapter nine, verse number 20, uh, twenty-three? Muslims are not even allowed to take their, their, their families to enter their houses to be their friends. What about we ask the Muslims that we cannot let non-Muslims enter Mecca? Isn't this is racism? Like if we look at this picture, this is in the highway in Saudi Arabia. There's a highway for the Muslims and there's a highway for the dirty one like you and me. And you are talking about racism and what if we pass in here in the highway and we cross this road and we go to mecca do you know what will happen they will shed your blood and you are talking about racism imagine if we have a sign like this it says in in, in new york huh? or this guy wherever his city in, in living in uh, sign says this highway for muslims because they are dirty you see you see how try to fool us and try to present themselves that islam is the good religion islam is against racism islam against imagine if we have a sign actually they used to have those huh? you know which is against christianity they used to have signs in south africa separating between the white and the black and the muslim they use those arguments by the way to to make it against christianity but the fact have this is have nothing to do with christianity because jesus said in matthew very clear words i was a stranger and you took me in I was what? I was a stranger and you took me in. Which means, if you are a Christian, you took the stranger in, otherwise you don't belong to Jesus. Who is a stranger? Who is the stranger? Let us, let us give definition for the stranger. Stranger is someone different from my family, not from my city, not from my country maybe, from different ethnic group, maybe have different color, have different language. This is what stranger means. Everyone is a stranger to you. So Jesus is saying in the Bible, if you take me, you take me as a stranger, you go to heaven. You take me as a stranger, you took me in. Not only you take me, you take me in, which means you take me inside your house as if you are, if I am one of your own. Then they said to him, Lord, when we did that to you, he said, when you did that to my brothers, you did it to me. So every Christian, he do that to stranger, he is doing it to Jesus. This is the teaching of Christ. Not like your God saying that Christians and Jews cannot enter Mecca because they are filthy and they are najis. And by the way, this is in the Quran. It's not only a sign in the street. Those signs are exist because Muhammad, he forbid people from getting to Mecca. Where he forbid that? From the Quran. He said, وَإِنَّمَا 
mushrikeen najis those who they are mushrikeen which us supposedly we are najis we are dirty we are filthy and let me show you chapter 9 verse number 28 i'm not going to give you choose any translation you want please all of them they are the same whatever you want here we go oh you believer the adult uh, adulterer only are unclean and here by the way they are using unclean the word it's filthy not just mean filthy not only unclean so let them not to come near the 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 the, the sacred uh, city of mecca this is why if you exceed that line as we showed you in the picture they will behead you, you behead you and then they speak about racism you know can we have one church in in, in saudi arabia not in mecca in saudi arabia in the whole country you know what can we have one grave do you believe it that you can work in Saudi Arabia but you cannot die? Do you know that? And by the way, you Muslims, you voted for Obama, right? Okay, this is the website of the U.S. Department of State saying that Islamic countries and number one, Saudi Arabia have an awful and awful rules for human rights. So you know if if is is sharia law is really good how come you have the most awful uh, law in the world read with me the department of state saying loudly publicly that those people in this country in saudi arabia the sharia law country do not give equal right to the muslims and you are trying to fully say is that we should support sharia law so even the one who shake hands with your king and the one who bow down to him, he himself in his government, which is a government, by the way, and he is not going to be president no more, very soon, I hope, because he's a liar. And anyone who says Islam is peace is a liar. It doesn't matter who is he, because he will go. This is your Sharia law. You see it? Sharia court. Do not give equal rights to people. So what kind of Sharia this Sharia is? What kind of law this law is? It's a law of discrimination. People are unequal. When you are asking us to treat you equally, and we do, actually, you, you Muslims have better treatment than even American. This is what Obama is doing for you. He made an insurance law, which every American have to buy, and the exception was Muslims. So you are even treated better than us, which really is against the Constitution. Since when we give ex you know, ex exception for those who belong to a group of religion, what if a person, uh, uh, the, the Muslim, tomorrow Obama will come to us with a law saying we should forbid uh, pork because, uh, you know, Muslims don't eat pork. You know, since when you make a law with the size of somebody, the law is made for the nation, not for a group of religion. They say that they separate between a church and government, but the fact when it's come to Islam, Obama, he bowed down to them like a puppy. So those who try to fool you, saying and trying to state that they are the good ones and they are asking you to support them in sharia Allah, say to them you are considering us our enemy so we will not consider you as a friend you are not treating us equally in your country so you should not even ask for rights which you don't believe in it because treating people equal first have to be something you yourself believe in it before you ask people to, to treat you equally and you Muslims don't believe in that. Muslims and Christians and Jews are not equal according to Islam. And not only that, the prophet of Islam, by the way, Muslim, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, and all, even those atheists, uh, 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 Muhammad, he said, no Muslims, his blood will be shed for killing them Muslims. This is Sahir Bukhari, one of the most authentic sources of Islam. And this is your prophet in book number three, hadith number 111, saying that in the case of murder, yeah, which means this is the Sharia Allah. Uh -huh. No Muslim should be killed for the punishment of killing none believer, disbeliever. Do you see it, Abdul? So, are you going to ask us to practice this law as long as you are asking for Sharia Allah? It means if a Muslim kill me, uh, we should not punish you for killing me. The punishment, by the way, for none, those who do not know, in Islam, actually, we showed you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, before I have tons. I I don't know if you get my book. Uh, we have a big chapter about this. Uh, the punishment for killing a Muslim in Islam is actually uh, Obama. He made a speech, if you remember, when he went to Egypt. He said the Quran says if one person he was killed, as if all mankind get killed. What a very beautiful thing to say. 
but he will not tell you that this verse is speaking about if you kill a Muslim. If you kill a Muslim as if you kill all mankind, you made you may, you may the most ugly crime ever. So what's the punishment for you? You will be killed. But here we go, Muhammad saying clearly that if a Muslim, he killed non-Muslim, the punishment is different. The punishment is totally different. What is the punishment? Uh, um, maybe give you some, uh, maybe give you a goat, if you're the family, you know, give them a chicken, you know. Uh, the price of killing a Christian in Iran is $250. The price of killing a, a goat, which means the penalty for killing a goat or a cow in Iran, I think the goat is $300 and the cow is $500. So killing a Christian is less than killing a cow in Iran because they cannot practice anything against the Sharia Allah. So they want to fool us, say Sharia Allah is something good, we should not go against it, when this is the most ugly, demonic, satanic, any human, evil religion, and law. If we actually can call it a law, this is a gang system. You know, gang, they can kill you, you cannot kill them. If you try to attack them back or try to get justice from them, they shoot you. It's exactly what Islam is about. They don't treat you equally. You know, the funny, they, they speak about Abu Ghraib, if you remember, that in Abu Ghraib, that American, they make those prisoners naked, etc. And by the way, I'm against that. But what is the punishment of a prisoner in Islam? What is the punishment of a prisoner of war in Islam? Do you know what the punishment? Let me show you from the Quran. And that is Sharia law too. Chapter 5, verse number 33. Muslim translation. The punishment of those who wage war against Allah. Okay, what the punishment is? So here we go. You wage war against them. What the punishment? And strive with might and main of mischief through the land. Because when you go against Allah, by the way, war against Allah, not necessarily taking an army. Me now, I'm waging a war against Allah. According to Islam right now, I'm waging war against Allah because I'm speaking against Islam. Therefore, you are waging war against Allah. So what the punishment now? Execution, crucifixion, or the cutting off of hands and feet from the opposite side or excel from the land. All of this because I speak against Islam. So they are upset and you are speaking against what the American did in Abu Ghraib. I didn't see in Abu Ghraib American cutting hands, cutting fingers, crucifying them, putting nails in their hands. And by the way, Muhammad, he put nails in the eyes of the prisoners. He put nails in fire and then after he, hit the, he heated the fire, the, the, the nails, he put the nails in the eyes of those prisoners. And you are talking about Sharia Allah, you want to bring this to us? You want to bring this to us? You want to say to us? I'm not going to speak about chapter 4 verse 34 where it says beat the wife. I'm not going to talk about women. They are not allowed to go to, to, to school because, by the way, this is why Muslims, they are poisoning their girls everywhere in Afghanistan. Now, did you ask did you ask yourself why they are the Taliban? They are poisoning girls because they are going to school? Because simply the Muhammad teaching says it clearly you cannot teach girls anything except to read one verse in the Quran, actually to recite, not to read. Don't teach them how to read, recite. To recite and to do uh, make a close. This is why we see all over the news, just just search for Taliban boy, by putting poison in water for girls in schools. It's all over the internet. Hundreds of those poor girls, they get poison in their water and they're trying to kill them. What is the, what is the crime they did? They are Muslims. Those girls are Muslims. So what the crime they did? Oh, they wage wage Allah against a war against Allah. What is the war they wage against Allah? Going to school, because going to school is against our teaching. So they have the right to kill them. So you want to tell me that you want to bring this to us over our dead body? We will never allow Sharia law to be in Islam exist to, to be in USA. If it's stupid ones in in some countries in the world, they want to have it. Let them have it. Actually, you Muslims are fighting it too more than us because you hate Islam. This is why you see all over, nobody wants Sharia Allah. Nobody wants Sharia Allah. Including you Muslims. So don't stop fooling yourself and try to say that you are a person who wants to follow Sharia Allah because that law brings no peace to no one, brings no justice, brings no human right, and it's against everything a human he stands for. Dignity, uh, uh, justice. Uh, uh, even a Muslim, he can lie to his wife. Even a Muslim, not only he can beat his wife, what about having four wives? What about marrying children? 
Hmm? You want to bring that to our country? You know, so it's endless, guys. If you want, if you are serious really to learn more about Islam, uh, get my book, The Deception of Allah, volume number one. And I hope soon, volume number two is going to be printed very soon too. And if there is anyone there from care, from anywhere, by the way, I don't know what they call it, care. They should call it, you know, call it a terrorist. They should call it whatever group. I, I challenge them to, to, to challenge me for a debate if they dare, if they dare. But who dare? No one. Christ is Lord and Islam is false. And God bless America. And just to let everybody knows, we are planning to start a Christian party. Christian party. Uh, you know, we love what the Tea Party is doing. We support them. But until now, we don't have really Christian party who organize us and make us a, a, a power in, in the political uh, uh, field. Uh, our voice is not heard and nobody cares for us. And you see now the Muslims, they have organization, but we don't have organization when we are the majority in this country. So anyone is interested to join this party which is going to establish we are working in this maybe next week we will have the first meeting and we are going to decide the name and we are going to start the legal paper anyone who is interested to join this christian party please you can go to my website which is investigateislam.com and you can email me from there and we will inform you when we will have the first meeting uh, and everybody is welcome to join as long as you are an american citizen for sure you can join as if you are uh, if you are a green card holder uh, but uh, for sure uh, we will be happy for you to join us when you are a citizen so everyone who is an american citizen he care to join our political party which is going to stand for the value of the bible we will not support a person but we will support our country we will support what is right for america we love this country this country is amazing me myself uh, why I choose to come to USA because this country the most amazing thing about it is freedom this country without a freedom is equal to nothing country without a freedom is nothing but a stable where animals are thrown inside the room and they close the door on them don't let the Muslims do that to your country as they did that to us in the Middle East we run away from there because Islam is the most ugly disgusting religion don't do don't let that happen to you so those who care to join us in our party, you can you can do the following. As you see, this is the website investigateislam.com. As you see in the corner, you go there and you click at contact us, and you can send me an email, and that email will go directly to me. All right, very easy. Don't forget to give me your email address and uh, whatever information you need to, and tell me that you are interested to join the the, the party. We will we will start, and. Uh, we would love to have all the Tea Party to be with us because I think all of them, they are great people. They are doing a great job, but still we want it to be more organized and we have to be, uh, uh, we have to force others to, to hear our voice and to make, to make a big move in USA. And this is the target. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And uh, please give the video for everybody who care to learn the truth. Thank you.